गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन दिस इज डॉक्टर ए कविता असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बॉडी एंड फूड एंड न्यूट्रिशन आर बी वेर आर वुमेन्स कॉलेज नारायणगुड़ा हैदराबाद फ्रॉम तेलंगाना रीजन वुड लाइक टू प्रेजेंट माई पेपर ऑन एन इंसाइट इन टू बायो फ्यूल्स एन अप्रोच टूअ सस्टेनेबल लिविंग लेट इज वी हैव ए ग्लांस ऑन द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ वॉट यू मीन बाय बायो फ्यूल्स बायो फ्यूल्स आर कंसिडर्ड एज ए कम्बस्टेबल फ्यूल्स बेसिकली ऑप्टेन फ्रॉम दी बायोमास So the term biofuel is generally used in the reference to liquid fuels like biodiesel and ethanol. Liquid biofuels are generally used in transportation fuels like petroleum, diesel, and jet fuel. Whereas the biofuels are the only option to replace this hydrocarbon fuel, which is used in the transport vehicles. This is widely accepted that the crops which are used to produce biofuels they can be generally replenished much faster than that of the fossil fuels. But majority of the traditional biofuels, such as ethanol and biodiesel, they are produced from the corn, wheat, or the sugar beets and the oil seeds, respectively. Ethanol is an alcohol and biodiesel is an oil. So fermentation is the only process which is involved in the fermentation of the alcohol, that is the ethanol. So it can be used as an additive to gasoline. Whereas biodiesel is formed by the process called as transesterification, which involves the extraction. of naturally occurring oils from the plants and the seeds which is uh, deferred by oliver et al 2008 and it can be combusted in diesel engines so well what is the need for us to go for the biofuels so the global forecast have indicated that by 2050 the world population will require about 70% more food 50% of more fuel 50% of more water and 50 to 80% in the reduction of carbon dioxide emissions to maintain social political and climatic security so the combustion of petroleum based fuel this is a major source of the greenhouse gases and the air contaminants contra- contributing to the world more issue of global warming melting ice caps and loss of exotic flora and fauna in such a scenario bio based fuels are recognized as the major players for ensuring the energy security for india in the future so besides this the biodiesel has been considered as an attractive alternate energy source for several reasons so first reason can be it is renewable and sustainable highly biodegradable and has minimum toxicity it has no let release of any carbon dioxide and it has low combust lower combustion emission profile because of its high oxygen content So there are three different types of bio uh, biofuels have been categorized. The first generation of biofuels are ethanol. Second generation are the fuels which are obtained from non-food biomass that we call it as the second generation biofuels. And the third generation biofuels includes the algal biofuel which is my study. So these are categorized based on the types of the feedstocks which is used in producing the biofuels. Now algae as a source of biofuels. So what are these algae? They are the diverse groups of eukaryotic and prokaryotic organisms, which can either be a unicellular and multicellular genera such as chlorella, diatoms, and large brown algal members respectively. The microalgae generally they are grown in water bodies or the ponds, which are smaller in sizes and usually measured in micrometers. So this is all the green carpet-like thing what you observe on the water surface. That is the growth of the algal members. Now, what are the advantages of utilizing the algae as a biofuel? So, productivity of the algal oil is higher in comparison to the oil seed crops. That is because of the ability to grow throughout the year. Algal cultivation requires less rate of water consumption. Algal biomass has the capacity to tolerate high carbon dioxide content. Algal cultivation does not require any herbicides or pesticides. Apart from providing additional nutrients, algal cultivation utilizes different sources of wastewater containing nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus. The conventional agriculture will not be getting any affected by the growth of algal biomass under harsh conditions like saline, brackish water, or coastal sea water. It algae is a renewable resource. They can grow in all the types of water bodies. Algal growth helps us to curb our greenhouse gas emissions. and algae is more productive than other forms of the biomass apart from this even there are certain disadvantages of algal biofuels also like the growth and the algal growth it creates regional sustainability problems 
algae might grow quickly but it still needs time to produce viable oils algae biofilms come with higher production costs algae contamination occurs more often with large scale production methods algae biofuel does not always meet its energy efficiency targets so as comparatively here the advantages are more when compared to the disadvantages so i have taken the algae biofuel for my present investigation so the my present study involves screening of the native algal isolates from fresh water sources acclimatization of these streams under laboratory conditions and growth optimization in various growth conditions to obtain enhanced biomass production followed by enhanced biofuel production so these are the two algal members which were chosen for my study one is chlorella vulgaris and another one is botryococcus brownii these both are the algal members belonging to the class chlorophyce commonly called as green algal members so the methodology what i adopted here for algal biofuel as the cultures of both these strains that is chlorella vulgaris and botryococcus brownii initially grown in a uh, full strength bold basal medium that subsequently grown in half strength medium which were diluted with a distilled water and they are incubated as 24 plus or minus 2 degrees under cool white fluorescent light and a light to dark period of 16 inch to 8 hours to acclimatize to acclimatize the cultured growth in limited nutrient environment and at the same time the dried animal dung waste was it was sun dried and processed as per agua et al 2012 dissolution of the dried dung was done as 10% the supernatant was filtered four to time four to five times using to remove the debris and the suspended solids a pale yellow extract was obtained from each of the animal waste and subsequently it was diluted to prepare a final 3% stock these were these working media solutions of 20 10 20 30 40% were prepared with each of the extract using the ground water next results and discussion in chlorella vulgaris 40% formulation showed highest biomass concentration which could be attributed to the utilization of nitrates and phosphorus by the cells in the extract media the biomass was of 0.34 grams per liter and 0.35.35 grams per liter was obtained in 40% cw and 40% gw formulation which is 0.05 grams per liter higher than the control and the commercial media However, the highest lipid content, that is 26%, was obtained in the cultures that were grown in less concentration of the extract media, that is about 10% of CA4 formulation, followed by 30% CAO, 20% and the 40 formulation, with 25%, 24.3%, and 24% lipid content respectively. Whereas the results are related to the second strain, that is Proticococcus brownii. highest biomass was obtained in the culture that was growing 40% followed by 30 and respectively hence is 0.06 grams per liter of higher biomass could be obtained in 40% cw as compared to control and commercial media but here also we can uh, get a higher lipid content at a very low uh, biomass uh, content of 4 to 6% which was higher than the control media So in the present study though biomass productivity was enhanced in the higher concentration of the waste extracts but the lipid accumulation was only observed in the cultures which are grown in the lower concentration that is of 10% so the results could be attributed to the induced stress which promotes the accumulation of triacylglycerides in a nutrient depleted conditions so growing of these chlorella and botrycococcus on a minimal waste extract formulated media could generate a lipid content up to 25% so these results shows that both the cultures can produce similar lipid content under optimum in vitro conditions using standard commercial media as well as in formulated media under optimal light intensities so the ftir scans of extracted lipids from both the cultures they were grown in the control as well as 10% formulated media shown the results here so the ftir spectra of the extracted lipids from chlorella and botrycococcus showed a similar scan pattern with six distinct absorption bands that revealed the presence of the functional groups such as 
aldehydes ki esters and the ketones characteristic of ch stretching vibrations the two band that were of particular interest are the band at one at 1740 cm per hour which is associated with ester groups particularly from the polar membrane lipids and the fatty acids and the methyl stretching vibrations in the range of 3100 to 2800 uh, cm implies the presence of the lipid so the region between 1200 to 900 cm signifies a sequence of bands due to co cc coc and cop stretching vibrations of polysaccharides as well as the methyl group and the methane group moves so the intensity of the absorption in the range is the indicative of decrease in the lipid content algae is the only feedstock mostly seen in the third generation biofuels hence feedstock is the only major difference between the second and the third generation biofuels so algae as the feedstock is known to produce biomass much faster and on reduced land surface as compared with the ligocellulosic uh, biomass the future of the biofuels will depend globally on their profitability hence we conclude that chlorella vulgaris and streptococcus brownii are the potential subjects for large scale production of the biofuel so these are my differences from which the literature was extracted thank you